Call the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners Transportation Workshop for Tuesday, July 26, 2022 to order. I'd like to welcome everybody here this afternoon. Uh, we'll begin the meeting with the invocation given by Commissioner Harvey and the pledge led by Commissioner Turner. Please stand if you're able. Let's bow. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, a day we've never experienced before in our life. Let us be productive. Let us be attentive. And Lord, let us look for your wisdom directly from your throne room. We pray for Commissioner Rawls' family as they're battling this cancer. And Father, we pray for Commissioner Adam Jack as he's under the weather today. We ask, Lord, that everything be done decently and in order. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Turner, and thank you, Commissioner Harvey. As we have moved the flag back to the place where it's been the last two or three months, it caught a couple of people off guard that were here this morning. So. Anyway, um, first item of business is we'll open up for public comment on agenda items. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It's not reasonable to expect that the board will engage in debate or deliberation on matters on which the board has received no prior information. Any individuals wishing to make public comment on agenda items? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion. We'll move down to BOCC workshop. And commissioners, if it's okay with you, I would like to make the suggestion that we go a little bit out of order and get the public works portion of this meeting out of the way and then come back to the budget. Is that okay with everybody? And Commissioner Adamzak did text me uh, during lunch and he's still feeling under weather, under, under weather, so it is doubtful that he will be here um, this afternoon. So we'll move down to item C, public works. Um, countywide bridge repair, uh, bid award 22-26. Mike and Mike. Thank you, Chairman. Invitation to bid 22-26 was issued to solicit bids from qualified contractors for the countywide bridge repair project 2022. The work shall consist of, but not limited to, sealing joints, repairing, undermining, sealing transverse cracks and asphalt, repairing displaced riprap bags, guardrail repairs, erosion repairs, spall repairs, void repairs, vegetation removal, pavement markings, repair of exposed tow walls, repair of delamination, and or other bridge repair activities on 12 bridges at various locations of Putnam County. This is a county funded project with an allocated budget of $490,400 within the project budget line 301-2110-537-63-01. Three contractors submitted bids in response to bid 22-26, and five additional contractors who attended the pre-bid meeting did not submit a bid for this project. Staff recommends the BOCC award the contracts for certain construction activities associated with certain project areas as shown in the supporting documentation, totaling $489,835 to the lowest responsive bidder for each recommended construction activity. Construction activities which improved the structural integrity of the structure and increased safety were prioritized when determining the recommendations to award. Okay, we'll start with Commissioner Questions. Commissioner Harvey, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Nimitz, on page 12 of our agenda, um, Holloway Road at Nye Creek, um, we just that was a DOT project that we just recently paved from 100 down to the creek. Why are we now looking at this again? Yes, and it's my understanding that these activities that we're proposing, the highlighted ones, the repairing of the undermining of the cap and the re uh, replacing the missing rock, rubble, slope protection along the abutments uh, was not included in that project. That was done just not more than three years ago, though. It's already blown out or something? Um, they didn't address that at all. He said they didn't address The cause of the undermining, I'm, a, I'm not so sure that's right. They put a concrete uh, ditch all the way from basically 100 down to the creek. Again, Chairman, that was drainage and, and paving for Holloway Road. That was not bridge activities. These are bridge activities that have been identified in the FDOT inspection reports. Okay. All these items have been captured in an FDOT inspection report. Okay, thank you. Thank yes, you, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay, before we move to Commissioner Rawls, who's next, the, the, the ones that are highlighted, those are the ones that you're suggesting be done, correct? Yes. Okay, so just in, for the Fruitland Swamp, so is that a total of all of the things that could be done or just the ones that are highlighted? I didn't add it up. Um, Do you understand my questions? I, I think I understand. So the lump sum total that's shown underneath there, that's for all of them. That is all not just them. the highlighted ones. Um, the sum, the total that's shown on the agenda cover sheet would be the sum of all the highlighted items. Okay. All right, Commissioner Rawls. So uh, what fund will this be paid out of? There is an account associated with these bridge um, improvements or that exact account number um, is shown on the agenda cover sheet. So that's a 301-2110-537-6301. That, that's the account. Um, Any idea what that is? Better place, place, okay. So we, we, we had a half million dollars for um, bridge and road repair last year. Um, have we blown through all that? The one, this is the account, this, these are the funds that were approved during the last budget for the bridge repairs. So that, that is this account, unless I'm misunderstanding. There was a half million dollars allocated towards bridge, guardrail, and uh, culvert uh, replacement and ditch maintenance um, last year during budgeting. Um, I don't remember seeing anything in, in Better Place that was for bridge maintenance. Um, so are we allowed to do maintenance on bridges out of Better Place? And these activities that were highlighted, I did take that into consideration as well. Um, I, would, I would say these these would be considered maintenance. Well, the so the, that's why we didn't highlight some of the other ones like removing dirt and debris and um, replacing guardrail reflectors and things like that. So I tried to highlight the ones that would add um, more of a capital improvement to these bridges. So more than five years. So I guess that really doesn't answer the question. Um, Julian, can you answer that question? Yeah, I'm not sure I completely understood what Mike was saying, but um, we are allowed to make capital improvements of repairs in nature through the BPP as long as they fit the criteria. And I believe what Mike is saying is that he verified that these activities would fit the criteria as defined. Yes, you're using you. crack filling and um, you, got, uh, some, you said that you replaced some block that's missing. Um, I, said, I said we did not include certain activities that we did not consider capital improvements. So the, 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 the 490, all that is capital improvements for the bridges yes. that are listed? Yes. Okay. Um, the money that was allocated for bridges last year, what happened to that? I'm going to say this is it, isn't it? And if it's not, I'm missing something. No, there, there, there was, the, the money was actually allocated within the, um, the, the, the breakdown that I got for last year's budget had a half a million dollars because it was a million the year before, and it was cut down to half a million. I have no idea what you're talking about. But it wasn't better place plan money. And th this is the account that um, I was informed was for the bridge repairs or for the for these enhancements improvements. Commissioner Rawls, if you'd so, like to show me what you're um, referring to or what you you had sent me an email last year with a breakdown. You had the uh, revenues and expenditures. Sure. And that was that one line. I'm going to question last year um, because we went from a million for bridges, guardrails, and all that, and it was dropped to half a million, but it wasn't money at a better place. What was the, did the better place committee review this and approve this as an expenditure? The BPP you know. committee reviews projects that the board has designated once they're complete. The BPP committee does not recommend projects to recommend projects to be budgeted. Yeah, the question, we, 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 a couple of years ago we said we were going to put um, our, our budgets in front of the BPP, which would have been last year. Um, was the BPP apprised of the fact that we we're going to spend a half million dollars repairing Sure, they've had, a, um, they've had a number of meetings to review what the Board of County Commissioners approved in the fiscal year 22 budget. So was this $490,000 approved by the Better Place Planning Committee or brought to them at all? It was brought to them. They do not approve it. They are given a financial report at every single meeting, so they were given it at, at those meetings on, on a quarterly it basis. Was, we were supposed to give them the latitude to take a look at projects and be able to chime in whether or not the projects meet, met the intent of the BPP. What, what, the, what the committee is charged to do is make sure that the, the projects that the Board of County Commissioners have approved to move forward through BPP meets a statutory requirement, but they don't have any input on whether or not it's a project worthy of BPP funds. If y'all go back and remember, um, they expressed some concerns and they wanted to see the budget ahead of time and then take a look at what was being proposed in the budget so they could um, say whether or not it met the intent of the BPP 
language. Um, I'm just wondering, my, my question is, were they provided this information ahead of time, or is this just, you know, we just approved $168,000 for guardrail replacement or repair um, at a BPP. So I'm just wondering, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for how we're spending and where it's coming from is what I'm doing. I thought the guardrail kind of general funds. I did too. Well, it said, it said I believe guardrails place. were um, BPP project as well. That was a month ago. Typically what happens in BPP for long-standing practice has been we allocate dollars to roads and the debt and then if we have additional dollars we do small guardrail or bridge repair projects. That's exactly what happened last year in this process. If you'll remember last year's BPP revenue was significantly higher than we had originally budgeted for um, and so that is what's happened. That is how your fiscal year 22 budget got set with those line item allocations in it for these activities to be completed. So I think what concerns me is, and I'll, I'll vote in favor of this, but what concerns me is, is we're taking better place plan dollars and using it in my estimation to make repairs that should have been budgeted and funded out of the general fund um, or the transportation fund, um, not taking money out of BPP because the bridge wasn't built with BPP money why are, we, why are we maintaining that? We should be maintaining roads that were built with BPP money. I would agree with that. Um, but I, I think it's a stretch for us to say we're just going to take this better place plan money because if the better place plan was not um, put back in, say, uh, in, in 2032 or 2033 when it comes up next time, um, where would the money have come from for the county this time? You know, so it's just that, that's the question that I'm, that I'm concerned about is that we're not, uh, we're not, we're not budgeting we're, we're just kind of waiting until something happens and we say, well, here's a pot of money we can use. Let's just use it. But I don't, I don't think that this is, uh, I think this falls under maintenance more than anything from what I'm hearing and from reading. Administrator okay. Suggs? Yes, sir. We've looked at the, uh, the Florida statute and it clearly states that these are funds that are certainly able to be used for these capital projects for, for maintenance of these type of, uh, of facilities. So, yes, we are following the Florida statute as required. Uh, just want to make it clear that the money that is authorized by the BOCC, U5, uh, to utilize for a better place. You're the five that control the authority whether or not we utilize better place plan funds for a project, not the better place plan committee. Their job is to look at the end of the year and throughout the year if they so choose, and we do meet with them regularly as, as, as required to make sure that we haven't utilized dollars on the project that didn't meet the Florida statute. But just so you're clear, we did meet with the, with the committee and we did tell them that we would let them look at the budget ahead of time, see what was proposed. And I'm, my question is, was this proposed to them? Did they have a chance to look at it? Because we were gonna give them the, uh, the ability to say, we think this meets the intent or does meet the intent. If it wasn't proposed, it's not a big deal. If it was, you know, I'd, I'd like to see what meeting was at. Because I'm and in the perfect world, you're absolutely right. We would do that, but when, when maintenance issues come up, the Board of County Commissioners is responsible for making decision whether or not we utilize the BPP funds, and then that committee will make sure that those funds are utilized so, according to state statute. Right. Whether it was or not, I'm not gonna, I can't, can't answer that on this particular question, but I can tell you that the intent is that we bring a project that's a legal viable project to utilize funds out of the BPP to the Board of County Commissioners who have the ultimate authority to approve or deny the project. And then the BPP committee will make sure that we follow the state statute. But you just said these are maintenance projects. That, that was the question I was asking. It's, it's, it's actually, an, it, it may be classified or, or called a maintenance project, but it's actually improvement of a, of a bridge and an issue that we have. So that meets the intent. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Turner. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I've got a couple of different things, but I'm going to start with a few years ago, the county was down under 50% on their BPP actual dollars spent on roads. Now, I think in this coming budget year and in last budget year, they're up neighboring in the 65 to 70% range because we got a certain amount of debt that we have to cover out of that that we can't cover mm -hmm. from somewhere else. And that was done before any of the people sitting up here today were here. So we got to live with that whether we like it or not. So. The question I have for you guys is when you went down the list and you highlighted the items on the list that you felt like would be covered under the under the BPP uh, capital uh, line project that we already had in the budget uh, from last year, 
by doing those and not doing the others at this time, does that add any liability to the county because we didn't do some of those at the same time? Or is it, and did you ask the contractors that did these jobs, would they do just the highlighted items you picked? Because a lot of times you go back to a contractor and say, I want you to build me a house and then you change your mind and you just want a shell, but you had him break out how much the shell would cost. You go back and say, all I want you to build me the shell, the contractor say, no, thank you. Okay. So my point is, is can we cut this down without, and the contractor still accept it, or have we asked that question to the contractors? Because Force if not, what we're doing today is all in vain. Mm -hmm. If we just pick a bridge, it doesn't matter. The Holloway Bridge that Mr. Harvey was talking about. You've got two out of the five items highlight, highlighted, and we bid it out to a contractor on an itemized bid. Does that mean that do you think the contractor would just do those two items, or are we going to have to bid this back out again with all five items included? So to answer that second question, um, yes, we did communicate that to the contractors uh, during the during the pre-bid meeting. Um, it is also on the bottom of the bid form um, that they filled out where it says under the note, any one or bridge, any one or more bridge locations or activities may be eliminated due to available funding. So that was communicated any to them. Any one or more bridge locations. Or activities. Or items. Yes. yes. So that was, that was. Um, so in other words, you think they'll go and do just part of this that would fit the the type of money that we're using because obviously this is not money that we can just do anything with it has to fit within the criteria and that's what you used if I'm understanding to highlight the, the line items that would fit within the BPP type money is that correct yes yes that is correct and and based off the bridge reports that we get I mean we pick the items that would you know that we would like to address so that um, they don't become structurally deficient bridges and have to have restricted you know, weights on posted, when I, so. When I first looked at this line item, or after I thought about it even for a while, I thought very seriously about trying to bring up the fact that I think that some of these items would have fit into the North Putnam Drainage District appropriation that we got, or at least items that are in that area. Uh, but after thinking about it, we have the, we have the money budgeted already. The items that will fit into that appropriation might be a sum of or a lot of these other items that we're not doing at this time in that area. And on top of that, I believe there's other bridges in that area that aren't as critical as these ones were that we're still going to maybe be able to fit some of that money into the North, Flor uh, North Putnam drainage appropriation once we get the final, the final um, narrative from them on what we can spend the money on. And so, um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I, I move that we approve this budget item. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion to move forward um, the countywide bridge repair project uh, by Commissioner Turner, and a proper second by Commissioner Harvey. Um, Mike or Mike, you may have mentioned this in your presentation. The, the ones that aren't highlighted, where are we with those as, as far as need and when they will be, when those will be addressed? Those will be deferred to the next fiscal year. They, they will not go away. We will continue to monitor they them. As away. funding becomes available, we will uh, have those, those scopes executed, as well as additional ones that may be added throughout the inspections that are uh, done annually okay. by All FDOT. Right. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, um, Mr. Nimitz, let's go to page 13 real quick and something that just came to my mind after I made the second on the motion. Um, burnt Bridge there on County Road 315 um, used to hunt that property, so know all about that area pretty pretty good. But on page 31 and 30 of our packet in the five-year work program, um, resurfacing from County Road 315 to 310. Okay, could that project wait until we get closer to this time? Because, I mean, it could probably be all done at the same time almost. You know, if we dedicate, if we just put that money. Well, if, if they would include it. The problem is DOT make, they always doesn't no, do No, I'm not talking about them including it. I'm talking about us waiting till 
all the work gets done in that area and we pay for it. You know, I'm just asking a question because it only makes kind of sense to me that we're down there working. We could get it all done at one time. I understand. Um, yes, and for that project, um, that is, I think it's the 25 fiscal year for DOT's five-year work pl program. Um, the the small void um, in wall two, 13 feet from the north end, that that would not be included in the scope for that project. Oh, I get, um, I get the, that. I'm just saying we could spend our money at the time when they're doing their work, maybe. I mean, I have, having two contractors in the same area at the same time um, isn't typically. Okay. All right. Well, we, we're fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Administrator Suggs? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I just, uh, just for uh, the commission as well as Commissioner Rawls, I, I want everybody to understand we, we do our very best to answer all the questions that we can uh, when, we, when we have the opportunity. And Bijan went back and looked at the minutes. In the source BPP committee meetings uh, for that particular year of, of 21, there was there was not enough folks to have a quorum in March, June, or December, but there was one in September, and this was part of that that presentation. Okay. Okay, we've got a proper motion, a proper second on the floor. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. We'll move down to item D. Um, Public Works bid 22-28 uh, South Palm Avenue sidewalk extension from Silver Lake Drive to Druid Street. Mike and Mike. Thank you, Chairman. The award of bid 22-28 is pending due to the associated bids coming in over budget. Invitation to bid 22-28 was issued to solicit bids from qualified contractors for the installation of temporary erosion control measures, clearing, grubbing, sub-base preparation, base preparation, curb and gutter, concrete sidewalk, pedestrian signals with a traffic cabinet, sod replacement, seating, and other incidental work. The funding agreement 4373-26-1-58-01 with FDOT provides 250,000 in funding for construction activities. Additional funds in the amount of $114,271.06 are required to award the construction contract associated with bid 22-26 to the lowest responsive bidder. Public Works has reached out to FDOT for the possibility of additional funding for this project. and requi This requires a signed letter from the board requesting additional funds. FDOT has also asked if the board is able to supply the additional funds required to award this project. In order to bring this project to completion, a budget resolution is needed to move $114,271.06 from reserve for contingency into the project budget line and for or a formal letter needs to be signed by the chairman requesting additional funds to complete the project. Staff requests the BOCC to direct Public Works to either move forward with the project and request additional funding from DOT or request additional funding and defer the project until a determination is made by FDOT. Okay. Um, thank you, Mike. Commissioner Turner? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. When this project started a year or two ago, um, it was going to be funded by DOT, either scop or scrap or something, but DOT type money. And I voiced my opinion back then that I was not for building a sidewalk on Palm Avenue for several hundred thousand dollars, but DOT agreed to pay for it, so I went along with this. Uh, here we are a, a year or two later, a couple of years later, and DOT is going to participate, but the county's got to come up with basically 115, just a shy of $115,000 to build the sidewalk south, south of, uh, I believe it's south of, uh, of the Silver Lake Drive. I'm not for this project any longer. Um, when it first started, I went along because it was a DOT funded project, but it's not a DOT funded project anymore. It's a DOT participated in project. So I'm not going to vote for an additional $114,000 for this sidewalk. That's just my opinion. So I just want everybody to know I don't believe I'm going to vote for it unless you can change my mind. Now go. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, did you say there was an opportunity to ask for more funding, or have we done that and they denied it? Yes, that's correct. We, we can ask for additional funding. There is a letter that we could have the chairman sign uh, to, to send to them, and we can defer the project until a determination is made on that. All right. Okay. All right. Commissioner Harvey? 
Well, I kind of felt the same way that Commissioner Turner did, and there is a possibility that FDOT will still 100% fund this project, but it just seems excessive to me. But then Mr. Rodriguez explained to me all the bells and whistles for the new intersection and the new lighting and the new box, electrical box that's going to control everything. Um, again, I, I just think it's, I think it's a lot of money, but I'm not going to say that if, if DOT didn't pony up some more and cut that number in half and we got a better intersection out of it for traffic and sidewalk that you couldn't, you couldn't change my mind to. So I'll just leave it like that. Thank you. Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> I, I feel the same way as Commissioner Turner. I, I don't think this project really is, is a need right now. I think we need to focus on other needs. And if, the, if, if we get the additional funding from DOT, I'm all for it. If we don't get the additional funding, um, I wouldn't want to spend $100,000 where there's a lot better place to spend it. Okay. Commissioner Turner. I don't want everybody on TV to drop dead in their chair, but I completely agree with Commissioner Rawls. Uh, I, I totally believe that if we could get the additional funding, you know, it's a different story. But that isn't where we started this from. We were offered the funding from DOT to take this on. Anytime you can get a state-funded project for pretty much most any reason, I'm for it. Uh, that would help with any kind of infrastructure within the county. So. Um, what, what kind of motion you guys want to put okay, this? It's got to have a waiving support or a motion to apply for extra funds, correct? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we allow the chairman to sign the letter pursuing additional funding from DOT. I'll so second that. My hearing aid cut out on the area. I'm sorry. No, I said um, I make a motion that we allow the chairman to sign the letter seeking additional funding from FDOT. Second, yes. Well, I've got a proper motion and a proper second to seek uh, additional funding. All right, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now, let me, let me, can I clarify something, Mr. Chair? We are not going to proceed until we get additional funding, correct? Correct. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. I just <laughs> kind of had that feeling. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, just. Okay, we'll move down to item E, which is um, Florida Department of Transportation, SCOP, SCRAP. I don't know what the other one is, CIGP. Application prioritization. I don't think it's still right. Mike and Mike. Thank you, Chairman. At the December 14th, 2021 BOCC meeting, the board provided public works with concurrence to move forward with the FDOT, SCOP, SCRAP, and CGIP application process for fiscal year 2026 funding. The projects involving widening and resurfacing of County Road 315 and widening and resurfacing of 315 uh, are programmed for funding in fiscal year 2024 and 2025, as seen in the FDOT five year work work plan attached. During the ranking process completed by FDOT, it was determined that the widening and resurfacing of Palmetto Bluff Road uh, ranked higher than the reconstruction of Union Camp Road. A letter from the BOCC to FDOT reprioritizing the Palmetto Bluff Road project higher than the Union Camp project will enable the Palmetto Bluff Road project to be programmed for fiscal year 2026. Essentially what you have here is Palmetto Bluff Road aligned uh, more strongly with the criteria for FDOT than um, Union Camp. So we want to reprioritize this such that we can secure the funding because we have a feeling if we leave it structured the way it is, ordered the way it is, we may miss out on the funding altogether. That's kind of the feedback we're getting from DOT. Additionally, recent le legislative appropriations have allocated funding for drainage improvements within Palmetto Bluff Road area and a project known as North Putnam Drainage Project. Public Works is requesting guidance on how to move forward with the reprioritization option uh, with FDOT, as well as the recommended grant work plan associated with the Northern Putnam Drainage Project in response to this recent development and potential funding. So essentially we have, uh, if we do reprioritize uh, the funding request with FDOT, the funding for Palmetto Bluff Road will become available in 2026, and we want to move that direction because we feel it will be secured, whereas if it's left the way it is, it, we may not get it with Union Camp ranking higher. So we do have funding available right now that we are revising the funding agreement for with uh, FDEP for the drainage portion of Palmetto Bluff and 
Millican Road. Okay, before I turn to my fellow commissioners, Mike, where, where, where does um, Union Camp Road, what happens to it? Does it stay and we send it off again, or should we look at another project that may align better with the, I think you said it, with the priorities of FDOT, which I don't have a problem with. We put it on there a few years ago, and it never has gotten funded. So should that be one that we should look at to maybe uh, move out of there and, and come up with another project next year? I, I think we can weigh it against the other projects we come up with next year. I, I don't necessarily think we should completely purge it, but um, I think we should defer it. I think we should resubmit this uh, prioritization list to secure the funding and revisit it at that time to see how it weighs against our other projects. Okay. All right. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so what made it go higher than was it a collector road? Was it more traffic? What was, because I got a couple of questions I want to ask about. That's something you really have to ask DOT. We don't know what the, 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 the methodologies and, you know, all the things, how they weigh it. Uh, I'm sure there's multiple projects within the district. It's not just Putnam County that uh, weigh into this process. So we're not entirely familiar with how they do it or what weighs into it. The other question I have, we're fixing to get an allocation from, um, Representative Payne that did a lot of work out there on getting some money for drainage out there. Um, so we're going to extend the road one foot on each side from what I read in here. Is that that's about right? Is okay. So is, I guess are we double dipping on drainage or or are we? I guess my my question is. I always kind of said if we don't start with the outfall first and work our way in, we're really not doing anything. Um, did we get, I don't even know how to say it properly, but do we have the availability to get through the drainage out there and get water moving? Because that was some of the problem is we don't have easements and we don't, we can't get it to where it's trying to go. We can do all this work there, but if we still can't maneuver, we can't get the water to move. And we kind of lost the battle here. Well, the, the DOT funding will be limited just to Palmetto Bluff Road, whereas the drainage funding that's legislative appropriated could go to Millican Road as well. Um, after discussing this with Mr. Rodriguez, we feel very strongly that we could use that extra money for these drainage projects out there. But some of the drainage problem out there is, is not, not all the way down to Millican. It's up closer... 17 and some outfalls that we don't seem to have easements over and if we did we could get more water moving on the on the upper side if you will you know what I'm saying? And, and that's something that would require some community engagement and and possibly seeing, you know how much you know uh, cooperation and participation we could get with uh, from the residents to get those easements okay that's Thank definitely you. something that we would want to take into consideration and make sure that the improvements are able to accommodate Mr. Turner. Okay, uh, part of what I had was uh, they was just covered by Commissioner Harvey, but I guess adding to that, the uh, legislative appropriation that we haven't gotten a directive on yet exactly what we can do with the money, but uh, but we've got the appropriation. I think it was two million dollars for the area. I don't think it was just to drain Millican Road. It was for the North Putnam area in there. So it's just like the East Plaque Drainage Basin. We didn't just go drain one road in there. We took the whole area and tried to do the best we could and drain the whole area and get it out of there. So if we need to, when we go to planning to spend like, just like we did in East Palaka, when we go to planning to spend that, then we need to take into account the whole area because if you only fix Millican Road, but you don't, you can dig the ditches, the ditches to China. But if you don't get that water a place to get out of there, by getting that water away from there, you haven't done anything. And so that's what we did in East Plaka. We tried to start out and move our way in and get as much of the water flowing out of there as we could. And it seems to have done better. We haven't had 150 inches of rain in a year like we did back when this started, but, but we've had some pretty good rains and it seems to be helping pretty good over in that area. Well, we need to try to make this work the same way. Take an overall look of the system and in my opinion, and I haven't seen anything or been told anything different to, uh, to date, is that you can also, because some of this water from this area 
runs underneath some of these bridges that are scouring and scalding over in that area, you can also possibly use that money to fix those underpinning on those bridges because that would directly be drainage uh, in that area. So I think we need to look at all this as part of the, that particular one. Uh, as far as if DOT seems to think that we're going to be able to get the road done in Palmetto, Ver Palmetto Bluff versus Union Camp faster because it meets more criteria for one of them grants. If we leave Union Road in there, Union Camp Road, then we may not get the grant at all because it doesn't rank as high up the list as all the, people, the other uh, projects on the list. So I think we're gonna have to take their re the DOT's reprior reprioritization of this and accept that. But I'm with Commissioner Pickens. We need to try to figure out how to make the Union Camp project that we all voted on several years ago and make it get up the list higher by adding some drainage to it or by doing something that makes it more friendly to DOT to where it would be prioritized because it's also a project that needs to be done too. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rawls? <clears throat> I think most of what I'm saying has been covered, but the, the biggest problem with Millican Road is right in the middle portion of it where there's nowhere for the water to go toward the river. Um, has, has there been any, any changes in identifying the easements or the, the, the ditches that are currently there and who owns them and any, any easements? Because at one point I was told that there were easements in place and I was told they couldn't find them, then y'all were looking for them. But the, there are clearly ditches there and they just are clearly behind a fence that is clearly owned by somebody. Our right-of-way agent has compiled all the easements we have in the county. Uh, I would have to review that to the uh, list that she's compiled to see what all's in there. And uh, if there's some in there that we'd like to have, again, we'd have to engage the, the, the community and see what they're willing to do. We're, we're the, in the, in the, toward the middle, I said the middle, it's you know, probably a mile from Palmetto Bluff, and, but toward the middle, it, it drops down, it holds a lot of water when you have a significant rain event, and the ditches connect side to side and then they start outfalling in that, that property. Uh, and it, I was told the ditches were dug by the Army Corps of Engineers back in the 20s or 30s, supposedly, but they need to be cleaned out because they're full of organics and trees. So, uh, I mean, that's, that, that would resolve a lot of the, the Millican Road problem. And while we're on the subject of Millican Road, I know we got it on the, on the um, dirt to pave for um, next year. I'm getting a lot of complaints about the Millings area that was put down when they when they repaved West River Road. There's been no other maintenance done on that, and I don't know what can be done, but um, we got three three calls this week uh, regarding it. Um, their potholes are, are huge. Is there anything at all that can be done uh, to get us over that hump or fill the potholes in? Patching the potholes is about it, really. Uh, you, you can't grade it. You know, they are millings, so. Again, we, we, we could go back and scarify it scarify possibly it. and try and blend it. Uh, and I'll have our road crew look at it and see to what extent they can do, but we don't want to make it worse to where it's, you know, uh, large pieces of uh, yeah, material. One lady was complaining about the front end of her car being damaged. Um, there's some significant potholes out there apparently. One guy said he'd taken his boat out there and just beats it up and down on the trailer. And, and millings are, are ideal to, to create a base to pave on top of. I don't like to leave them out there exposed for years on end because they will do with just what this road is doing. They will washboard, they will pothole and then we have an issue with it. Ideally, if, if we could, we'll have to look at it and see would it be better to possibly, you know, overlay it, um, you know, or just, you know, you know, fill the holes, as we said, or scarify it. So we'll have to look at it and, and weigh, weigh some, some things as we evaluate it. Anything would be helpful. Sure. Okay, uh, commissioners. Mr. Your... Chairman, I make a motion that we approve your signature on this reprioritization of Putnam County's application for the Scott Scrap Sig Peak to Fiscal year 2026 funding. Thank second. A proper motion by Commissioner Harvey and a proper second by Commissioner Turner. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, okay, saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Before we move to the, um, the budget reports, we do have an item that we were going to discuss um, about the vacating, I guess, or disbanding the MSBU. Um, so, Mike, did you find some more information? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we actually drafted a, a letter uh, that we'd like for the board to review. Do you have copies of it? Do you have copies of that letter? Yeah. I already read it. Do you have a copy? Okay. You can walk around. There. I didn't bring my iPad. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't see it, Commissioner Turner. Um, I've got one right here. Um, we, good, I've read mine. We would like to, I'm sorry, I've, I've got a copy. We, I think what we'd like to do is I'd like to ask Bill to come up if, if it would be appropriate. This I'm, time, I'm Mr. fine. Chairman. Um, ask Bill to come up, Bill Thompson. And he, um, I was talking to him for just a minute before the meeting, and there's another uh, small line or a little bit of information that he would like he's the chairman of the committee forever anybody that doesn't know and um, he had something he wanted to add to the letter uh, so if he could maybe tell us what that is i'd like to uh, personally hey, try to hear that no. and uh, and see if we couldn't agree to add that to it yeah in the letter that i provided you this morning i wrote that in quotes but i will read it to you uh under the and i've read the Letter from Public Works. Uh, Mr. Tom, could you, put you, could you say your name and your address? I know it's repetitive. You've been here for Bill so Bill Thompson, Everybody 123 has. Kingfish Avenue, right. Palacca, Florida. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't think it's detailed enough. It says your your rates are going to be 238.12, but it doesn't say from what or why. It says okay. per lot. Per lot. Yeah. But, it re but what's funny is at the top it references parcel. Okay. But what I submitted to you this morning is, and I quoted it, under the current MSBU maintenance contract, the cost of grading has increased from 275 to $1,250 per mile, and cleaning ditches has increased from $175 per mile to $1,250 per shoulder mile. To cover this cost, the property owner assessment per lot will be increased from $34.96 to $238.12. Per year. Okay. So, I didn't get a copy of that. that language in there that, that's actually saying that you're, you're, I think the, and I'm, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Bill, I'm not. That I think what he's trying to get in there is the language that your current assessment is $35 or 38. 34. Your new assessment's going to be 200 and 38. 38, 38 12. 12. So, I think that's the language you're wanting to get in there where yes. the people, when they read this letter, understand that. And, and, and I want them to understand the reason for the increase was the cost of the new contract. So. Right. And so I, I think that was very, very. Uh, What's that number? 35? 3496. 34.9. Currently it's 34.96. So could we incorporate that in there that the current assessment is $34 and that it's going to 238? <laughs> Vote yes or no. <coughs> Because I think that's very imperative to what they're trying to accomplish here is that it's not going from 232 to 238. It's going from $34 to 238 or 238.12. Yeah, it's so going, I think that's <coughs> it's $203 per lot. So it, it'll be $203 per lot. Right, yes, yeah. I understand that. But I think that with what's on here now, that me, I'm agreeing with you mm -hmm. that I don't think people would understand when reading this letter that what's what's happening here. And so we, we can certainly do that. You know, if we can make sure that the, but we place that information in there that the current is 34 and that the new assessment will be 238. OK, are you for it or against it? Because I think that's actually the question that's being asked by committee, by us, by everybody, are you willing to go up $202 a year on your assessment to have better roads than what you would have otherwise in these class two roads? Can I say to maintain current services, would that be fair? The increase will be, will go from 3496 to 238 maintain to maintain current services. services. Because yes, it, and see, keep in mind before this started, the MS, MSBU, I'm almost certain these were class two roads. And so this is going to take it to a, repair only when they're impassable well and that was another point i wanted to make uh, there's four main arteries in there i, I would say five uh tri tri sale uh kingfish bowfin and bonita and you know to not have a scheduled maintenance plan on those roads i think is wrong and i, I would just add redfish to that also 
all those roads were lime rocked back in the day, uh, thinking that we were moving toward a paving project, which never matured. So, you know, I, I, I'm concerned about that. I, I don't want to hold up, you know, the progress with the MSBU letter, but. Uh, I tried to do a little research on this bill, and I could be wrong, but the, what I've been able to research so far is back when the MSBU was put in place on this particular subdivision, the roads in there, whatever they were made out of, or however good they were, they were still class two roads, which means Putnam County only does class two roads whenever they become impassable. They don't have, they're not in the monthly maintenance system yeah, whatever, see that, like regular class one roads are in the system. That, so, if you once they do their reason i'll let you talk i mean i'm not trying yeah, to talk okay. over you i swear i'm not uh there when they do their research if the original roads when they went into this were class one then i'm for them to remain class one but we've had a we we can't really take a class two road that was a class two they decided to have, have an msbu for more maintenance in their subdivision and then and then they decided it's too much, and then so they take it off, and they want to go to class ones within the maintenance system. That's the reason why the MSBU was put in place to start with, because the county, even way back then, wasn't <coughs> taking any more class one roads into their class one maintenance system. We can't even afford the ones we got, much less start allowing <coughs> other class two roads into class one maintenance. Okay. Well, the roads that I mentioned were all rated. Uh, for paving, and they all came in in the high 20s. So, you know, I'm just putting the obvious out there that I think for those main arteries to not have a scheduled maintenance plan, even if it's every two months, is is going to be hard to swallow by the people that live there. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Rawls. So this Regarding the parcel above, what you really should be saying is your portion will be because if you refer to parcel and you're not you're not saying that there's five portions or three portions or whatever the size of parcel, then it, it could it could be a receipt to the individual. So I don't know how much more effort it would take to go to each parcel owner and say this is your share, so that you have four that is four times two hundred and thirty eight, so you got nine hundred twenty something dollars. Um, I, I can assure you the people who live out there are not afraid to call. Again, I, I think this is a double-edged sword. Um, I had one young lady re reached out to me. I guess she's the vice president, and she's not happy with going down 
in, in this direction. So it really is going to be up to you guys to advise us on what y'all want to do with your roads. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think time is of the essence right now, and I think the letter was pretty good, so we modified it a little bit today, cleaned it up. As long as we can get it through legal, uh, maybe those can get out in the mail. You said nil to tomorrow, possibly, and and we can get a response back and probably try to put this thing to bed before August 23rd. And I okay. think that's the that's the goal. And yeah. and I'm not going to disagree with Commissioner Rawls on this, but there is. Um, We've never done this before, and and I've never seen an MSB abolish since uh, or demolish so, since I got here or before <laughs> I got here. So this is going to be uncharted territory, and we'll just have to see how it works out for you. But I think the best thing you got going, even though I disagree with how y'all did it, I think you got Lime Rock Roads. Um, I think that's if it was a clay road, I'd have some really big heartburn right now but uh, lime rock probably will hold up for a long time before you have to get a whole lot of work done to it so it all depends on the amount of rain i know i know it does all right commissioner turner um i want to make it plain here i want to make it clear that i wish we weren't undoing this msb i really wish we weren't i was i wish that we'd have taken the steps to try and it's probably too late for that now, but to try to maybe drop the level of service from the 238 down to something that would have helped a little bit more that maybe you'd have got more out of, but maybe not cost so much money or, but I understand we kind of, and I did make the commitment to you, you bring me the letter, I'll make the motion to send the letter out and if 50% plus one, I'm not gonna break that commitment to you that I'll go there, but, uh, like Commissioner Harvey said, we've never w done away with an MSBU, and I think that five years from now, when y'all are all needing bubble trucks to get in and out of your house, that it's going to be a lot different situation than it is even right now, because when you have an MSBU and you're trying to participate, it's a lot easier for the commission. Like this year, you ran out of money real early, and so the commission just basically said, okay, because you have an MSBU, and we haven't raised them up um, properly like we should have, then we're going to take over maintenance of the MSBU until the end of the budget year. When that MSBU is abolished, that's going to go away. You're not going to have regular maintenance in there like we agreed to this year because a lot of these, if not all of them, are class two roads, and it's going to go to when they feel like it's not when public works feels like it's impassable. It's not just a call. We get calls. 10 a month from everybody on class two roads that says there's a big pothole out here. I have to drive around and if I forget it, I, my tire hits it. That's not considered. It's because you could drive around it. I'm just telling you. So I'm not gonna break my commitment and, I'll, and I'm gonna vote today and, and push to carry this forward at the bequest of the committee. I'm gonna do it. But I don't believe that's the way that we ought to be going, but I'm gonna do it. Commissioner right. Rawls. Microphone's on. <clears throat> um, we're, my understanding is we're not voting on this today to abolish or not abolish, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. The we're letter's going to go out. The yeah. Letter okay. Ask for a 50% plus one. Right. Um, is there any opportunity for you or possibility you guys might want to get together and form another MSBU while one's being taken apart, putting one together, moving forward that would be uh, I guess more equitable to all because part of the problem is the equity problem, from what I understand, uh, and then and then the cost well, is your. You just change the one that's there now. I don't. I don't think. I, I think the. I think they said we couldn't change that one to because right now it's per lot, not per parcel, and you you have those oddities where people are paying for two or three pieces instead of where they have one house, one driveway, in some cases one vehicle, but they have three lots. They're paying three shares, and this is part of the heartburn is it's not fair to them but they could join them up now and it would become one they have but it's still because they were lots then that i asked the question before and i was told that we could not unring that bell but is it possible to put together another msbu that would be on a on a per parcel basis and then 
you know, see what you guys want to do with well, that. Why couldn't we change that? I mean, well, I'm just asking. Change the number. The, the amount of work that needs to be done. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is it's a simple math thing. I say, yeah. okay, so they join up three lots, if they own three lots, and then it costs $242 a year instead of $238 a year because there's less lots that, that add into the amount of money needed. But the guy paying the 240 something now is going to pay three something or four something because yep. he's going to have to pay more to catch up with the people that, and the whole idea was for you not to ever develop your lots. So, I mean, that was, you combine it, you lose your, your ability to ever split that off and sell them. Well, you so, are the expert in this, I'll, in, as far as I'm concerned, but I, but I would like to say that if we are going to go that route, then it just seems to me like we could take the one we have now and change it to where it would fit instead. And, and you know, I don't, before we start having that talk, I'd kind of like to see where this letter comes back because if 50% yeah, of the people don't come back in, then, we so, do then, then we're, it's going to be where it is now right. uh, because we're not going to abolish unless 50% plus one say tear it down. So I don't see how we can make any decisions on anything until we get the answers from the left. We can't. We really can't. But I think it, that's why it's imperative to put in that letter that what the increase is. Yes, sir. That, yeah. we, did, we, did, we got that accomplished yeah. for you today. Yes, sir. You want to make a comment? Come up and state your name and address, and you can make a comment. My name is Francis Gasson. 169 Benita Drive. Mr. Harvey, I talked to Mr. Davis down at um, the appraiser's office. He said that as a parcel, it can be 10 lots. If that parcel is broke up, he immediately lets Public Works know that it is now, instead of being one parcel with 10 lots, it's two parcels. One may have five, they may split them in half. But that's not a problem. The problem we have is that place was set up as lot area. And that's the way the MSBU was set up. But if we went back to parcel, if it gets changed, he's gonna get he's gonna get notified. But then change the price. Price is the price and it's gonna be divided by twenty five or it's gonna be divided by three hundred and twenty. It's not gonna change that's it's the price, the total price is not changing. It would go up. And that's what, we're up, that's what we're all trying right. to solve that's, that's, right now. Well, I understand. Contractor does well, what own. happens if you were the one that owned 10 lots at the front of the road? Yeah. I, I, Are I, you going to be happy paying 10 times $238? I won't. I won't. No. So why, why no. should any of us be happy? I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I think <laughs> that's how we're getting at it. But his point is that if you're the person that has one lot, right. yeah. and I understand you're paying you're 238 but if it goes up 10%, I mean, we're talking, what are we talking? Uh, Nilda, do you have the numbers that show how many parcels versus how many lots are assessed? Yeah. That, that's easy math. I think the thing so at right hand now, today is, are we going to send the letter or not? <laughs> yeah, I think that's yes. it. This commissioner made a commitment to, 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 to build it. Well, I would send, I would vote, I'd make the motion and vote to send that letter okay. if he brought me an official. If you go for it. And so my motion I just wonder is how many we people send out that letter as amended tomorrow morning if possible. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion to send the letter as Un amended and un under uh, questions and under comments, Commissioner Rawls. I wonder how many people are going to get this in the mail and say this is more trash from Putnam County and throw it away and even look at it because well, it's. We don't get 50 this is the plus one. It's just then it stays. We this is the third one, right? From another angle. Yeah, they're. Well, this is, the first one was paving, the second one was the rate increase, and this third one now that the committee is well. <laughs> no, but, but this is the right thing to do. The uh, committee has come to us nope. saying, we, we want to abolish this. This is the right thing to do. So what, what are the, it's 50% it's of the respondents, period? Plus one. Plus one. Plus, plus one of the respondents? Of the res no, I think it's got to be of the owners, doesn't it, Rich? You have to help me here. Yes, sir. Respondents. Of the owners. Of the parcels. Just like we were putting. So is it coming from the yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to ask, is it lots or parcels? It's going to be based on <laughs> parcels. It's mailed so out by parcels. So mailed out parcels. For instance, if Bill owns two parcels, he's going to receive two letters. He will get two votes. Yay, Bill. <laughs> but if he, if he owns 10 lots inside of one parcel, That's he'll methodology. Get... You're referencing an apple to an orange here. Well, that is how the methodology is based I'm... as it references the 
the lots. When we but, send but, out. But, but follow my logic. If, if somebody has multiple lots inside a parcel, they're getting one letter? No. They're getting, they're getting multiple letters. If they have a parcel with 10 lots, they're getting one letter. Okay. Yes. Okay. They're not getting 10 letters. One. This is the third thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really yeah, you'll never get, get anywhere near equity on this. So, um, and then if 50% if of the people do not respond, what happens? It stays in place. The MSBU stays Weren't, weren't place. you all saying a majority of the landowners live out of county? Yes. Doesn't have anything to do with it where they live. It's a lot of record. Owner of a lot of record. They still right. pay a fee. They, get the they had a vote back in the day to put it in put there, in. so they ought to have a vote to take it out. Okay. Um, we've got a proper motion and a proper second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Chairman, before we move to, if I may, um, this morning, while we're extending the agenda this morning, we also had a uh, discussion about the value adjustment. <coughs> it's time sensitive also, and the reason it's time sensitive is because on the 12th of August, we're having our first value adjustment board meeting, I found out during the day today. And so I would like to take this opportunity to propose and, and nominate Julie Masters to the value adjustment committee to take the place of Todd Dixon, who has, who has decided not to seek another term, because his term is up the last day of this month. So I, uh, I would like to nominate Julie Masters for the value adjustment board. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, we got a proper motion by Commissioner Turner to nominate Julie Masters to fill Todd Dixon's seat on the value adjustment board for a year. And we have a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Laura, you'll get that to the proper authorities. All right, we're going to take a three-minute break before we get into the budget. You cut it down 27 times. <laughs> Thanks, Nilda. I hope everything goes well with your husband.
go ahead and reconvene the transportation meeting and we will um, move back up to item A, um, third quarter budget reports, Ms. Julianne. Yes, sir. This is um, our quarter three budget report, which is the period that ends June 30th. It is in your packet. Um, as we've talked about at the first two quarterly reports, uh, we are not cyclical, so things are not going to be even all the way through the year. You're going to see some volatility. Um, briefly reviewing the funds, the general fund revenue is at a total of 89% of revenues, so we're trending above where we would be. Obviously, 75% would be if you're straight on. Um, and then the expenditures are trending at 68%. So uh, we always like it when revenues are trending higher than our percent of expenditure budgets. Uh, the transportation fund, again, the revenues are trending at 73% of the year's uh, budgeted revenues, and expenditures are trending at 70% of the budgeted revenues. Moving on to the fire fund, as of the quarter three, revenues are trending at 89% of the budgeted revenues, and expenditures are trending at 63% of the budgeted expenditures. The sanitation fund, Revenues are trending at 85% of the budgeted revenues as of quarter three, and we are at 17% of the budgeted expenditures. The regional water system, we're at 78% of budgeted revenues and 91% of expenditures. That um, number is skewed due to the cyclical nature of the grants coming to fruition, and so you'll see the capital line is um, trending that number pretty significantly high. That's a, a brief overview of the quarterly report as requested by the board. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Start with Commissioner Rawls. Um, going back to the reserves, <clears throat> so we've got. Can you turn your microphone on? What page now? <clears throat> page four. The, on, your, on your top line, the um, 9901 says uh, reserves c-o-n-t is that contingent what fund are you in sir huh? what fund are you talking about general fund okay uh you're uh that's contingency reserve or contingency is correct okay and then you've got um reserves clerk which i assume is a clerk of court then your um, capital outlay <clears throat> what is in in the capital outlay reserves it's just a percent of your reserves. It's used That's for, those are reserves used for capital projects specifically by state statute. Okay. So you have a number of different reserve accounts at your disposal. Some of them have more or less flexibility to use as the year proceeds. Um, so theoretically, you would establish a certain percent to each one of those reserve funds um, and to reserve them for the needs as they come up. Your contingency is gonna be normal operational dollars. So if we run out of fuel money, mm -hmm. that's where we would take those dollars from. If we decide to um, buy a trinket and add it to the, the roof, then that's where your project uh, contingency essentially, you're isolating different, different portions of your reserve so that you're responsibly budgeted. So the, um, would you consider the, the contingency to be unrestricted? Within, well, all of these reserves are essentially unrestricted and can be used to the extent the board directs minus the allowed requirements by state statute that has to be restricted and held for cash reserves. The can, you have budget policies, so there is a bit of restriction on all of these. Um, if we were to use the uh, capital outlay reserves that has to be done by statute by board resolution so it's still a restriction but you can use it and you could move it to a different pot essentially um, so there are restrictions on all of these reserves to some extent are any of these reserves encumbered currently no sir there is you do I am showing you the pending which shows you total use of the clerks because we've given the clerk the authority over his reserves so that theoretically would take away from your available reserves and then I am showing you a pending uh, potential $1 million, which we um, could use for the potential purchase of the property out at the port. But none of that is in stone or has been passed by board resolution. And the, the 199 for Inspire, <clears throat> is that going to come to fruition? That's or is that been removed. Be uh, the, the note wasn't removed, but you don't see it in the pending line any further. So it is not in that number. 
So what, what, what was the re result with Inspire? Did we pay them that or did that just go away? No, we reallocated that for some uh, by board direction mm -hmm. for some IT equipment that they needed to purchase. I mean, the, with the Inspire, um, I'm talking about the, the actual invoice itself, whatever happened with that? We paid for the months we did. for the services that were rendered okay. and then we terminated the contract moving forward and then we reallocated those dollars for capital improvements to the IT infrastructure. Okay. So as we stand right now, minus the million dollars, we're, we're around $14 million of unencumbered uh, usable reserve money should we need it. Unencumbered, however, remember by state statute, you have to keep 10% of your operating revenues and by GFOA standards, it's recommended to keep 16.67% of your reserves. Yep. Not well, of your total budget, not reserves, right? Yeah, total yep. budget, yeah. not reserves. Okay, thank you. Total operating budget. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you, Julianne. We'll move down to um, Fiscal year 23 budget presentation. Oh, right. And I've got IT that's going to turn your monitors on so that you all and the public can see what um, is coming before you. Can you turn this? Uh, of course. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Harvey. Would you allow me why Ms. Julianne is pulling this up? A little, I just want to have a point of privilege, if you don't mind. Sat in to preserve my time, sat in to the office and went over the presentation. Also had an opportunity to sit in one day um, unannounced to when Mike and Mike were going over the transportation budget. And I just really want to say that um, if you don't get a chance to do that, you've missed an opportunity. Um, line by line, comment by comment, why do you need this amount when you've only spent this amount in two years? I was uh, impressed, blown away, and felt very good that we were in good hands with the staff that we have that is questioning every single line item in our budget. And, and they didn't know I was gonna say this, and frankly, it's just coming from the heart, but this was not the way it was years ago. And it is a, it's a joy and it's an honor to serve with the people that we currently have. And my time in the barrel was, was pleasurable I will say that. I even came back to the trough and asked more questions and got my answers within five to ten minutes of the, the three questions I had. Um, it, it, it's good. I, and I say this on the, I say this out in public that <coughs> the budget for me never stops. I, it continues on as when we put this one to bed, we'll start another one. And it's just, it's just really the people of Putnam County should be proud of the fact that what this board has done, the steps we've taken, the percentages that we've made with the constitutionals, I feel like we're going in the right direction and I think our budget is fixing to prove that by this presentation. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that opportunity. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Commissioner Turner? Uh, I'd also like to add to that that there's been some controversy lately on social media about the fact that that this hasn't been out brought this hasn't been brought out before it has now but this we need to keep in mind that today has always been the day when the budget the tentative budget was supposed to be presented to the public so all the crap on the social media that's been going on about um, that somebody didn't get to see it or somebody didn't get to what number one the commissioner could have seen it if he wanted to before today because it was invited, the commissioners were invited to go look at it. <clears throat> at that point, they could have been, they could have asked for anything to be included in this presentation they wanted to and they didn't do it. <coughs> but when it all boils down to one thing, 
is that today has always been the day that we were going to give it a public presentation of the tentative budget. Not the, so the solid budget, we're not at the end. We, we can massage this, change it, do whatever we need to do from now to October 1st and then continue doing it into the next budget year. This is the first day of the public presentation for the tentative budget. You can't start it till you have it. <laughs> but this was, this is not the first day that we could have looked at it. I looked at it a week and a half ago and I've had questions almost every day since. I've probably aggravated the fire out of them ever since then about, well, what about that? Or what about this? All the way through the whole process. But we need to, when it all boils down to it, the one thing I want to make sure that everybody understands that watch it on TV, if they are, is that this has always been the first day that the public was presented the tentative budget by the, by the PowerPoint presentation. That's always been the choice. So uh, anyhow, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. Um, I, I was reading it and listening to the city of Times about the Edison City. You said you received this a week ago? With no. the PowerPoint? Yeah. You betcha. I went in and we, talked. No, we, I didn't receive it. No. I went in and met with staff. With staff. Uh, this is the first time I've seen it. Well, yes. you could have come in too if you'd, have, well, if you'd asked to. You were invited in. You were invited in, though. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, but this is the first time with this hard copy here. That's, I mean, that's, no, no, no. I, I came in and met with staff. Right. I, what, I I, I, what, I, what I'd like to see is a line item breakdown. That, that, well, I think, I think well and if you'd have come in and asked staff, you could have done it. You still can, Jeff. That's decision. the whole point that's I'm trying to make. You can still ask for that. All you got to do is just ask. I did. I said email and ask for it. Okay. So, you get it. When? Today? Before uh, now? No, I think it was Friday or Saturday. So, um, excellent. I, I didn't receive that from you yet, although I was out of the office Friday. However, if we, if you'll allow me to go through this presentation, I'd love to share some information yeah, with you. We're going to talk about that in here. So if I could get that as well on, on a separate spreadsheet, but that was what I'd ask for in the email. Didn't we should we see one or two previous emails? I think it was one of the two. Um, about reserves. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Are we ready? All right. I think we're ready. Okay. With Julia. Excellent. So this is the tentative budget presentation for fiscal year 2023. So when we talk about the budget cycle, the first thing we need to remember is how it works. From January to March, typically your county departments begin working on projecting next year's needs and they submit budgetary requests to the budget officer. April through July, administration collaborates with each of the departments to review the budget request and major initiatives are workshop to gain BOCC direction. June and July, we start receiving revenue estimates and we uh, begin working through a tentative budget to develop it. The tentative budget is a balanced budget and is intended to simply show the ability to obtain a balanced budget. In July, Commissioner 101s are held to allow dedicated individual time to answer Commissioner's questions and to receive input on the budget presentation which is presented today to the public. In July, the budget presentation is presented and the tentative budget is also presented in, for formal uh, approval. The tentative budget is the budget presented to the BOCC as administration's recommendation given the input from department heads relative to the re revenues expected. From today, once formally adopted, the tentative line item budget is published on the website for review. Historically, this report is published in early September prior to the first budget hearing. The budget can be tweaked up until formal adoption of the budget at the second budget hearing in September and then after is amended at any time during the fiscal year drew, through the process outlined by Florida statutes. 
The primary budget goal of fiscal year 2023's budget is to present the BOCC a balanced budget with the priority to provide staff a minimum wage of $13 per hour and or a wage increase of 5.38%. Employees will receive the greater of the two scenarios which benefit their scenario the most. Today, the BOCC at the 505 must pass a tentative balanced budget, set a maximum millage rate, and formally record in the minutes the time, date, and place of the, tenet of the budget hearings. The tentative budgets reviewed today will most certainly change <coughs> prior to final budget adoption. Today's tentative budget as presented in summary format is intended to show that our tentative or starting budget is balanced without the use of reserves. For the tentative budget discussions, carry forward projects are roughly estimated. It is far too early to accurately project where we're going to end. Operational budgets are balanced without the use of reserves and the revenues are budgeted at 96%. Florida statutes requires a minimum of 95% of your expected revenues to be budgeted. The board has set the level of 96 and that is what we have used in our budget. As we begin with a general fund, we first will talk revenues. What you will see on your sheet, the grid at the bottom is the fiscal year 22 approved budget. The grid at the top is the tentative fiscal year 23 budget. The current general fund reserves is $15.5 million. Statute requires 10% of your reoccurring operating revenue to be retained, which is roughly 6 million. And GFOA recommends 16.67, which is roughly 10 million. Ad valorem revenue projections yield a $4.6 million increase. Of that increase, 386,000 are allocated back to the additional dollars needed for the GP Economic Development Grant and the additional dollars needed for the CRAs. 65.61% of that ad valorem additional revenue is appropriated to your constitutional officers. The state shared revenue projections in the general fund yield a $46,000 increase. The expenditures in the general fund, capital expenditures are not budgeted at this time. Capital expenditures requests are included for discussion purposes only. You'll see an increase to personnel services costs due to the proposed minimum wage adjustment resulting in a minimum wage of 13 an hour or a 5.38 cost of living adjustment along with the corresponding FRS increases, as well as the additional fire rescue positions that were budgeted to reduce the unbudgeted overtime in the department. Your operating expenses in the general fund have decreased $200,000. Your other uses and transfers is increased by 4.9. That is uh, made up of the additional funding to the constitutional offices, the additional funding to the CRAs, the additional funding to the economic development grants, the additional funding to the transportation fund to ensure it is operationally balanced. The constitutional officer's appropriation is a total all, all cumulative of $31.2 million of the 48.3 in ad valorem revenue that's expected for next year. Capital improvement in the general fund for facilities. Before we go too far, I'm gonna make sure you understand the codes that are in here. CF is designated for a carry forward project. That means the funds are budgeted this year, but we are not projecting to close it out and it will move forward next year. If you see an asterisk beside the project title, it's indic indicative of the project, uh, meaning that the county has received notice of award, but we have not received the funding agreement. And so the funds are not booked and or they're not reflective in the fund balance. So of the top items there that you'll see, um, there are seven items that are already uh, budgeted and appropriated. And then the remaining items are for discussion purposes only as submitted by the department heads for their needs for next year. This is facility related only. There's a request for the roof replacement at Crescent City as well as the EOC, some HVAC replacements, DDC controls, fencing at the soccer fields, and a Melrose restroom upgrade. 
equipment um, transportation, I'm sorry, equipment in the general fund. Again, those top four items are already designated and funded. Um, they will be carry forward and or ARPA items. And then the remaining items have been submitted as request from the department heads. The Ag Extension Office of Van, Building and Grounds has requested two vehicles, codes three vehicles, Parks and Recreation a vehicle, IT two vehicles, Parks and Rec a mower, the boardroom audio system replacement, the government complex key access, firewall replacement, and backup service servers. This is just initial discussions um, showing you what the requests are at this time. Moving on to the transportation and the road and drainage projects fund. In this grid, you will see that the middle column is your transportation and the far right column is your road and drainage projects. The current transportation reserves is $780,000. Um, the state shared revenue projections yield a net loss of $35,000 in the transportation fund and a net loss of $19,000 in the road and drainage or road and bridges fund. In order to operationally balance the transportation fund, the general fund is transferring in $1.179 million. Expenditures for the transportation and road and drainage funds. The transportation fund, um, to recap, has reoccurring revenues estimated at about $4.852 million. Their personnel expenses are $3.719 million. They have debt of $432,000, which leaves approximately $709,000 to support the department's operations. This is before the transfer for the general fund and, and explains the necessary purpose of it. The Road and Bridges Fund, it's used to record numerous grants, which is why you're seeing a large fund balance. Most of those grants are gonna carry forward, which is why you're seeing roughly the same large capital outlay from this year to next year. The reoccurring revenues that come into the Road and Drainage Fund is completely expensed out to the resurfacing program that we have countywide. So uh, we're expecting 1.15 in revenue, we're expensing out 1.15 in that resurfacing project from that fund. Um, same as last, the capital improvement plan for these funds. Um, all of these items on this first page are designated. Uh, there's a funding source already designated. Most of them are carry forward and or legislative appropriations. As noted in the last fund, those uh, which have an asterisk by them indicates that the project uh, is a project that the county has received the notice of award but has not received the funding agreement and is not reflective in the fund balance. The Transportation and Road and Bridges has requested the, the following capital equipment request. These are for discussion purposes only. Um, a replacement pole barn, fencing, and some various trucks and lawnmowers. The fire fund revenues, the current fire reserves are 1.79 million. The fire tax is projecting a yield of a net increase of 555. The fiscal year 23 will be the last full year of the safer grant revenues, and that's 786,000. What happens after that? Um, the safer grant. I know, what happens after that? Uh, well, we'll have one partial year of the grant, and then after that, we must self sustain them, those positions. Eight, positions? Eight, nine, 12. Expenditures, uh, the capital expenditures are not budgeted. CIP requests are for discussion purposes only. The operating expenses increases are largely attributed to the rising cost of utilities, fuel, fuel products, uniform, and bunker gear. The personnel services, just as we saw in the general fund, is the proposed uh, wage adjustment for $13 as a minimum wage and or the 5.38%, as well as the additional fire rescue positions to reduce the unbudgeted overtime. The capital improvement plan for the fire fund Again, you'll notice the asterisk. We, we did receive the Legislative Appropriation Award, but we do not have that funding agreement, so it's not booked at this time. Uh, carry forward of station refurbishments, and then the new request for some extraction equipment, um, engines, tankers, and an HVAC equipment. The Better Place Plan uh, revenues. At the time that we submitted everything, the state revenue projections had not been released, so revenue was projected on a three-year average. This is probably a conservative estimate. 
The current BP reserves are $5 million, of which $3.3 are restricted to cover debt. The fiscal year 23 budget includes carry forward projects and your expenditures of animal control, 750, Georgetown of 158, and the communication system tower of 1,080. Debt payment and transfers each year, 550,000 uh, is held in BPP reserves for future debt, 550,000 is transferred to the utilities fund to pay current debt, and 872,000 is to cover the jail debt service. For the new revenues coming in, the fiscal year 23 dirt to pave is projected to see a $3 million budget, and then resurfacing will have the $1 million. Fiscal year 23 budget will allocate 67.22% to road projects. So recap on the next page of your capital improvement plan, which is what we've just discussed, the carry forward projects at BPP, uh, what will be in BPP for next year. The Port Authority Fund. The current projected Port Authority reserves are 976,000. The expenditures, fiscal year 23 budget includes the carry forward project of the Pickleball Group and the Army Corps dredging feasibility study uh, has a remaining $100,000 payment uh, to be made in next fiscal year. The utilities fund, again, you're gonna see two funds um, here. Your middle fund is your East Putnam Regional Water and then your far left fund is your water utilities. The utilities reserve balance is 1.78 million of which 982 is restricted reserve for debt. The water utilities has a reserve of 90. The East Putnam Water Fund is projecting an increase in service-based revenues of $148,000. Uh, this is uh, attributed to more households coming on, tapping into the, to the water system um, and sewer system and which generates ongoing revenues. Intergovernmental revenue, you'll notice, has decreased from fiscal year 22 to 23. This is because that's where we record the grants, the septic to sewer, in phase one and phase two are closed. And so in fiscal year 23, we will only carry forward phase three, which is a total of 450,000. In fiscal year 22, in order to operationally balance, the general fund was required to transfer 245,000 into the East Putnam Water, uh, Regional Water um, in order to operationally balance it. But in fiscal year 23, the general fund will only need to transfer in 100,000. Expenditures in the utility, the capital outlay, you're gonna see a noticeable change from fiscal year 22 to 23. And that's because the grant funds, again, phases one and two are closed, so that capital project is uh, resolved. And you'll have phase three there, which again is the 450000 Capital improvement plan and the utilities. Again, uh, if you see an asterisk, this indicates the project that the county has received notice of the award but has not received the funding agreement. If you see two asterisks under the amount, it, it notes that there, there is a county match involved. Uh, we are awaiting the funding agreement to determine the actual amount of county match that would be required as we move forward. Um, the bottom three items are not included in the discussion or the budget, they're for discussion only. And that's uh, department trucks, RF meter heads, and a well motor and pump backup inventory. The solid waste fund. The solid waste fund reserves are 35.3 million. Of that currently 21.1 is restricted for closure and long-term closure cost as per DEP. Need to keep in mind that the projected closure and long-term closure costs are gonna be adjusted next year substantially at this point. The, uh, those are adjusted on a five-year basis based on your permit renewals. So the initial data suggests that phase one is going to include roughly a 33% increase, and phase two, which is includes a whole new cell, will include roughly a 55% increase in what we're going to be required to keep in restricted reserves. And the expenditures, uh, capital expenditures are tentatively budgeted because the solid waste fund is self-sufficient, so they can sustain their capital needs as well as their operational needs. The operating expenses increased are largely attributed to the rising cost in utilities, fuel and fuel products, and expected increases for waste pro collection services. At this time, the initial request was an 8% increase, which staff is evaluating the request against the contractual agreement. Personnel services increased in this fund just the same for the same reasons as they have increased in each of our other funds where personnel is budgeted. 
The solid waste fee, as we reviewed this morning, the operation portions of the solid waste special assessment and user fee as applicable will be decreased from 125 to 100. Based upon the current increase in cost of service, the recycling component will increase from 39 to 40. This results in a combined cost of $140 per year for each household in the county for disposal and recycling, which is a decrease of $24. This would be for households in Crescent City and Palatka because they do their own solid waste collections. For all other areas, for the households outside of Palatka or Crescent City, the collection fee increased from 112 to 119, which results in a total annual assessment and user fee um, of 259, which is a decrease of $17 from the current charge of 276. The capital improvement plan for the solid waste fund does tentatively budget the capital needs for the uh, operations for next year. You'll see a list, three of those items at the very top are carry forward. The remaining items um, are new budgeted for next year. That concludes the budget presentation. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Julianne, again. Yes, sir. And, um, just like uh, on a one-on-one, -on -one. um, you went through it. Um, you had a good pace, and it's detailed. I appreciate having, you know, all the different funds in there, all the different monies that we have, whether it's a carryover, whether it's, you know, the new ARPA money in there and things like that, where you can just see it line by line. And I truly appreciate your work and staff's work, Administrator Suggs, um, for what you all have done. So we've got a few questions. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Turner. Um, I don't know that I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Much as I'd just like to say, good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Five years ago, when I showed up <laughs> around here, you had to have a master's degree in accounting to even get close to this, I'm telling you, to understand yeah. what was going on. Matt came in and he started it. He really did, getting us on the. And this year, <coughs> this is excellent. Thank you so much. It's excellent. I did get a chance to come in here and look at it. I'm glad we presented this to the public today. It's most, it, uh, it uh, answers most of the questions, but I do want to highlight a couple of items in this if I could. Number one, if you take the payroll out of this budget, if you take the payroll out of this budget that we voted at 13 minimum plus the 5.38%, the operating expenses for this county actually decreased $202,000. So they pitched in on this 202,000 of the increase in the payroll to make this happen by lowering the operating budget in the county. That's with fuel going up. That's what all the expenses going up. They actually were able to trim $202,000 out of this budget. Excellent work, excellent work. It's hard to do in this environment. I do it every day in personal business. It's hard to do in this environment. Excellent work. Uh, the other thing that I want to bring to, uh, to everybody's attention is in the Better Place Plan. If everybody looks at, uh, in there, they'll see that the, that the amount this year that we're going to spend on roads, uh, whether it be paving or dirt to pave or resurfacing, but roads, uh, solid roads, which is what I think it should be as much as possible, is 67.22%. Excellent job. It was down to around 50 or less a few years ago. We've got it back up now to where it should be, 65 to 70, which is because we have debt service that happened to that Better Place plan before any of us ever showed up that there's nothing we can do about it other than to pay. So again, excellent job. I appreciate it. I appreciate the hard work that went into this. I appreciate you meeting with the commissioners last week, which was offered to every commissioner, by the way, but I, meet, I appreciate it. And uh, and that's all I have for right now, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Ms. Turner. Uh, Commissioner Harvey's next. You know, um, thank you, Ms. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I do want again. My comments before we started are the same as I feel right now, but I feel even stronger that we have the right people in the right seat on the right bus at the right time in our life, and we're moving Putnam County forward. Um, what a great presentation and truly, um, you know, if you don't avail yourself to get this information, then you just miss out. The public has this information now and it's a very, very good thing. I do want to talk about one thing, um, the, the jail. 
I know we talked about one time looking at uh, trying to refinance that jail to see if it wouldn't help us out a little bit to maybe lower the life, the, the years of life on the loan, but have we, have we given any more thought to that or is that something that we're, we're looking at? I can follow back up with you on that item. I, I'm, I didn't ask that last week or, no problem. or, or follow up the other day, but um, you know, that, that's something that we all inherited it. And I remember when I got here, I was handed the key and, and I remember the current sheriff throwing the keys to the jail on the floor and saying, y'all pick it up and work with it because I'm done with it. Um, and it was, it was trying times right then. And it was difficult and had the better place plan not been renewed, I don't know where we'd be at today, frankly. Um, but I, I do think that that one, if we can take a look at that one day and see, I know Matt, Mr. Mr. Clerk, you worked on it for a little while. Don't know all that I should have asked you and I apologize I didn't give that to you ahead of time, but you know, I'd like to see that maybe in the future we talk about that. I know you tried, so, but again, Julianne and Mr. Suggs, outstanding document. Thanks for your hard work. And again, our budget starts October 1. You start January 1. You don't even get any time off from a budget. I mean, technically, you're, the budget never stops. So I appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Harvey. Commissioner Rawls? So you, you did not include CIP. I was just wondering why. Historically, we do not include CIP for anybody other than the solid waste because they're the only self-sustaining fund, meaning that they have enough revenues to cover their year's operations. CIP is always brought to you guys at a subsequent meeting um, for your evaluation of use of reserve dollars to cover next year's capital plan. So when we're looking at things like the Ag Extension Office Transit Van, Buildings and Ground Vehicles, Code Enforcement Vehicles, Parks and Recreation Vehicles, IT Vehicles, the, the new firewall for um, IPT, government complex key access, are those considered um, CIP? Yes. Okay, so they're, they're in here, but they're, and we have pricing. Um, do you have this run all the way out where you could share this with me where you, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're just giving this, I can run the numbers anyways, but um, I would like a line of breakdown because I, I don't know if it tells the same story or not, and I guess that's what I'm trying to get to is, uh, I saw the 202,000 did that 202,000 include these numbers that are here now that say not available for discussion purposes only or? In A, um, not applicable. So no, anything that's designated with the NA is not included in the tentative budget because so the follow, follow this logic then. If, um, do, do we need a, a transit van for the ag office? Do they really need that? Or, or do we need a firewall? So both department heads have stated, yes, these are needs. Now, when we look at reserves and the board decides how much reserves you're willing to give up, obviously this list, list will have to be prioritized and so some my, my, items my question, on this my, may my not make it. My question is simple. We're stating to the public that we've balanced the budget, we're not spending reserve money, but we're saying that if we're to meet our needs, and I guess this is what, where, where I've been frustrated over the years is I take a look at uh, what people tell me the needs are. I know how important a firewall is. Of all things, that is, that is our, what, what protects us from the rest of the world from getting in to our information. But as I go through here, and it's just you know page after page after page of NA for discussion purposes, but I, I guess what I wonder is what would the budget look like if we put the CIP in there, if we put these requests from departments um, that they're saying their needs are, not just basic requests, um, what, what, the, what the budget looks like at that point. Your reserves would decrease by the amount of money designated. Which is how much? Uh, well, there's several different funds here, but for the general fund, roughly 1.2. Okay. Um, and if we ran out the other funds, what do you think we'd be looking at? Yeah, you, you can get back to me later. It's not a big deal. Oh, okay. Um, the, what's the, the loss in the transportation fund from the state? What is that from? What's, what, what's driving that? So your transportation fund has revenues of your, your those are most of your gas taxes. Right. Gas taxes generally are a consumption-based uh, revenue production. So as gas prices rise, you see consumers be willing to drive less 
you typically get a reduction in those revenues. As gas prices go down, you may see the inverse happen. Um, however, when the state does their revenue estimating conference, what they've sent to us at this point in time shows net losses. Really? Okay, I, I was, I'm, I'm shocked to hear that. Um, that's crazy. All right, and the transportation fund, <clears throat> it looks like it's down a million. Um, and I was, I was just trying to keep cheap track, so I'm just taking really quick notes. Um, year over year, we're, we're, we've got about a million dollar difference. Mm. Is that because of gas taxes or? You don't have a million dollar difference. Um, look, looking at, at grand total 22, you're 11, um, 11, 6, and grand total 23, you're 10, 7. Nope, that's a road and drainage fund. Well, it just says transportation, road and bridges. Okay. Right. So, okay, so the road and bridges fund. Those are your grants. Those are okay. typically your grants strictly that come grants. in. Okay. Not strictly. Remember, as we went through this, those are your, um, most of those are your grants. The only reoccurring revenue source you have going in there is your state shared revenue, which this year does show a net loss of $19,000, but is projected at this time to be a total of $1.151 million in revenues, which is then budgeted as an expenditure for resurfacing. Everything right. else in that fund is grants. But that's less year over year. So By 19000 How do we break out, is, is roads, bridges, guardrails, how do we break that apart? Like today we had a conversation about bridges um, that was strictly bridges and using the, art, the um, PPP money. Sure. Your road and bridges fund is defined in your AFR. We can get you a definition of it, but I'll send it to you. That's, the, that's what your audited financials produces you, that book, and it will define that fund in greater detail. I think that's what you're looking for. Well, I, I know last year you were able to show me the spreadsheet that had the revenues and the expenditures, and it was about 3,000 lines deep and had everything broken out, right? I mean, it, it drilled down so I, I could hmm. see payroll related to transportation. I could see debt. That's the line item budget that we talked about. It's going to be released after we pass the tentative budget. Okay. Yep. And, and I guess releasing it after the tentative budget, you know, I, I wish I'd had it before so we can have, have more conversation about it, but I'll take it whenever you can get it to me. Um, Why would you want it? How could they give it to you before they had a tentative approved budget? Because the, like, because the, the excuse the, me, Mr. Chairman, I didn't mind. Just, I apologize, Mr. Roberts. No, the, the, the to answer your question, understand. to answer your question, this is based on something. And it's, ba it's based on these line items. <laughs> um, all right, the twelve positions for the safer grant was it six or twelve? He was holding up six. You were saying twelve. It's twelve. Twelve. It's twelve. What, what do you think the cost of those in round numbers? Are we talking seventy-eight, five, eighty thousand dollars a position? Seven hundred eighty-one thousand. Well, safer grant. Currently, the safer grant is seven hundred and eighty-six thousand, and it's covering whole, twelve people. Well, that, that's one hundred percent of twelve positions. Um, I don't know that it's one hundred percent, but we're already right. supplementing yes, right, the right, remaining right. of that. Right. Okay. And so, if there was an addition or a cost of living so adjustment, we're now. supplementing it now. So in twenty-three, we're good. Yes. Halfway through 24. You're going to get a partial payment in 24, and then in 25, you're going to get $0 for the safer grant. <laughs> the 24, we'll get about 375000 plus or minus. I don't know that it works out to be half. Oh. You're going to get, so we started it in a partial year. We're going to end the partial year. Okay. That's two budget years from now. Um, what is $125,000 operating expense for the Port Authority? That's your approved budget for this year. I can, we can pull the budget workshop, uh, the approved budgets online. We can look at it. No, I just, what does the money go to? It could go to any various items covered under the Port Authority. It wouldn't be pickleball because that's in your capital, but it could be any water repairs that are out there for the water system or anything else. Uh, I, I won't answer that off the top of my head, but it is already out there in your approved budget for fiscal year 22 you could look at. So, um, revenues for Port Authority, what do we, what do we have for that? We have 23,000 charges for services. Is that our total revenue? 
That's correct. At this time, we're only projecting for water. We don't have any other sources of revenue in the Port Authority that we have to project for. Okay. Um, so the, the 125000 in operating costs, is that, that's just an arbitrary number that we're throwing in there? We don't really have it targeted for anything in particular? That's not an arbitrary number. That's your fiscal year 22 number that you already developed, and it is budgeted out in line item detail on your approved fiscal year 22 budget. It, it's on the website right now. That's what you approved last no October. I'm sorry? No idea what it's going towards? You could look up the line item budget, but no, that's not part of the presentation today. Okay. If you could give me that, I'd appreciate it. I'll send you the web link. Okay. Um, 8% uh, waste pro increase, is that included in the proposed solid waste that we discussed this morning? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I, I just didn't want that to come well, It's I, not I, an I, addition I, to. Okay. We projected where we think we're going to end. Um, so right now, one of the needs that I know that, that uh, Public Works has is the, the ditch equipment, the, the vacuum truck. Um, I saw in there we're looking at maybe dump trucks. Um, if, if we don't get them what they need, and my understanding is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mike or Mike, um, you guys still have one vacuum truck? Yes, that's correct. Is it, last time I heard it was operational half the time and having issues with repairs? It, it, and it is an older piece of equipment, but uh, yes, it, it, it functions. All right, so um, I guess the, my question goes to the level of service that we provide the taxpayers. Are we, are we able to, with, with the equipment, the manpower that we have for the ditch crew, are we able to keep up? Because I've been getting uh, a ton of complaints in my district regarding culverts, um, ditches, uh, cleaning of culverts or not cleaning of culverts, and I've been trying to explain to them that we're very limited. Um, are we trying to move to maybe having two or three crews on the road in the future or be able to... Again, we do carry a number of vacancies, and we're exploring other options very similar to the grass cutting, where if we're unable to, to fill those vacancies, uh, possibly contracting some of these uh, scopes of work out uh, to, to get us caught up and stay on top of things. But Would we have the equipment if we, had the, if we could fill the vacancies? Or? Yes. Okay. And we, we, we have enough equip, equipment. Uh, we, we need more staff right now at the moment. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm good now. Thank you. Yes, sir. On the uh, budget presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll move down to um, commissioner requests. Uh, commissioner Turner. I don't have anything additional. Commissioner Harvey. Mr. Chairman, I do have a couple items. Um, and real quickly, dirt to pave. I, I spoke to Mike and Mike. Um, I just like saying that. I'm sorry. It's just like so a good morning fun. program. You know? yeah. Mike and Mike in the morning. Isn't that a dinosaur too or Mike, Mike? I don't know. But, uh, you know, we were promised a few weeks ago, seven weeks ago, that the contractor that was doing dirt to pave would put asphalt on. It appears now, Mike, Mr. Nimitz, would you give me the dates again of when we're looking at the contractor's commitment to the tar's already on the road, so it's just a matter of reshaping it, reforming it, and getting the asphalt on it, and our contractors have given us a date of when. August 15th through August 20th. Okay, the reason that's important is, you know, um, we gave, I think our contracts allowed till October, and they went out there and did a lot of work real fast, and people were excited, and then we couldn't get asphalt. And um, I just want the viewing public to know that we're still on top of it, we're still pushing hard, and we're still trying to get these roads back into play. Thank you. Um, also, I want to give kudos to Mr. Suggs and Sean Ladd. Um, the other day at a public forum that we had, a um, lady brought up, an, uh, brought up a concern about a, a, a bridge, a wooden bridge, um, that was failing on a sidewalk. Um, we met out there with Ms. Keys. The project is in the Safer Route to School program. The solution to the problem, um, the temporary solution was to bypass that 
uh, bridge, bring, bring the walkway out towards the road and come back around and intersect back with the bridge, I mean with the sidewalk. Um, the solution now is to extend the culvert out by Mr. Suggs said and put uh, lime rock on top of it and also pave or not pave but put a concrete sidewalk on top of that. So I just really want to give kudos. It was a very hot afternoon. We were standing out there, came to a relative solution very quickly and it will fit inside of our Safe Route for Schools grant that we're getting. So I want to give kudos to where they belong. And Mr. Suggs, I, I appreciate you going out there. And I know Ms. Keyes was very excited. And I, I thought that that night that it was in the safer route for school, but you don't want to say something wrong. So we waited till the next day to make sure. But I uh, appreciate that very much and, and look forward to that taking place. Mr. Chairman, that's the end of my comments. Okay, before I get to Mr. Commissioner Rawls, um, uh, Administrator Suggs wants to make just closing comments. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking me out of turn, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. I've got some folks in the uh, executive directors here today that need to get to another appointment. So I wanted to take the opportunity while they're still here in the room. <clears throat> thank you, first of all, uh, for all the positive comments. And, and uh, Commissioner Turner, thank you for uh, mentioning the Honorable Matt Reynolds, who's here with us today. <clears throat> As you remember, four years ago, that was one of the first things that we talked about changing. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Matt, kudos to you. I believe after we got through that first budget, there was a standing ovation for the, for the changes that was made. And this is an opportunity for us to thank these folks today for improving even further on the process. <clears throat> I think Commissioner Harvey said it best when he surprised us uh, a couple weeks ago with his appearance and we were sitting in a, a budget workshop and a meeting with, with staff and department heads. This budget is a, an absolute result of the efforts of those executive directors going to their staff, meeting with their staff, and coming back and cutting that $200,000 to help us get to where we are today. So I personally want to thank Sarah Caron, uh, Mr. Grimes, uh, Mr. Tilton, Mr. Siafi, and uh, Mr. Uh, Nimitz over here, and, and, and Mr. Rodriguez for the efforts that they put into this. But no one has worked harder and put in more hours on this budget than Ms. Julianne Young, your Deputy County Administrator, night and day and weekends, as recently as this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I knew that to be a fact. So, uh, you know, I appreciate the accolades, and I do appreciate being the County Administrator and getting to work with these fine folks and with you fine folks as well. But I want to be extremely transparent and positive here with, this, with these guys and let them know how much I appreciate them. They make this job I don't want to say fun sometimes, but they do. So they make it they make it where you want to get up and come to work every day because you get to work with these fine folks. And, uh, and the work that they do for the uh, citizens of Putnam County should never be questioned, whether it's in the public, on Facebook, or in this room, because they work day and night to support the, this commission and these citizens. And uh, so uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for, for taking me out of the term. But I needed to say that for our folks needed to go off to their next uh, next meeting here. And I just want to say thank you again to all of you folks. And Ms. Young, thank you so much for all that you do. And commissioners, it's been a pleasure to put this together for you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. So I just couldn't agree more. Uh, Commissioner Rawls? I have nothing else. Okay. All right. Um, commissioners stole most of my thunder. I just want to say that uh, when I arrived here and now, it has been, this is my sixth budget. And um, I'm not a budget person. And uh, so I have to have a little more attention than probably the average commissioner. Uh, not spoon fed, but pretty close. And it was really hard to understand. I felt uh, better when Commissioner Turner came on board and he was struggling with it and uh, <laughs> Commissioner Harvey. And then the first budget, actually, uh, they were getting information uh, that they hadn't gotten before. That's right. Right? That's right. Okay. And then when Matt uh, took over the position, uh, we got more information. It was broken down. Um, more so it was easier to to look at and, and dissect and, and digest uh, yeah, the first year they actually gave you your budget information in September right before you had right. a vote on your budget <laughs> it, it, exactly so the improvements have been made and, and thank you Matt and um, and now moving forward with the administrative uh, executive team that they put together and and I appreciate all of them getting together and and working on their budgets to conserve and cut and then get the information um, 
two staff and for Julianne, I know you put in a tremendous amount of hours and this budget is the easiest one yet. And I appreciate the one-on-one. -on -one. I appreciate the, the presentation today. So the public can see this, they'll have this and go back and review it uh, and ask commissioners questions or whatever. Um, Administrator Suggs, I appreciate all your efforts also. So I appreciate everybody and, and let's give them another round of applause, I think. Okay, so we'll move down, if there's no more further comments, um, we'll move down to public uh, comment on miscellaneous items. Any individuals wishing to make public comment? Okay, seeing none, we do have a 505, so we got about an hour. Uh, got a little bit of business to take care of then. We stand adjourned. I don't think we have another 505, do we?